Well, it's old Skinner here. Got the mace back there and the 59, and then I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got the Epiphone. Seduced was wanting me to kind of do an AB between the Epiphone and the 59 that I built and everything. And I got the microphonic pickup fixed. Seduced. Maybe I tried the silicone trick. Worked out like a charm. She's quiet as a church mouse now. Nothing. Nothing. Gotta love it. Now, another reason why I'm doing this, I'm debuting momentous occasion. I'm actually, I found a pedal, a foot pedal. Now, now I got my boss noise suppressor. Figure since I was using it, and I've got the MXR Phase 90, and then I've got my old Ibanez Super Stereo Chorus pedal from way back in the late 80s. I found this, um, it's a MXR Classic Overdrive. Pretty cool little, little box. Listening to it on YouTube and everything, the overdrive that it has really matches up to the mace as far as tone. I can dial it in to where you can't really tell when I'm switching from the, the box back to just the amps distortion. I mean, here's the amps distortion. <laughs> It's a lot more dynamic, and you can tell a little volume boost because I got that, you know, because I love the this like for doing the Skinner and some Molly Hatchet, a little bit of it. The Blackfoot, I'll probably use the pedal on because Ricky gets a little nuts, but you know, stuff like that, the Mace does fine. But also, I love a lot of Gary Moore, and I'm, I'm gonna start doing some of his. I've got a couple of bands that are interested in hooking up with me, and I'm gonna investigate that and see what happens there. Try to put my own together, but so many musicians are so flaky anymore. They set up, yeah, I want to audition, yeah, I want to try out, and then they, you know, you set the time and date, and you're there, and they're not. I got tired of messing with it, so I just, I'm looking to get into a band, so. Get the old mace back up out there on stage where she belongs. That's just the mace. And then the pearly gates, I did a little adjustment and stuff. I had, I did the fret leveling and everything. Got that issue straightened out. Got the microphonic pup straightened out. Now the first time when you guys heard this, I had the neck pickup wired up with the Lux Bumblebees. I had it wired in the 50s style, and then I had the bridge wired in the modern style. And that's the reason why it had such a punch and such it was almost overbearing. It was, you know, way more aggressive than than what we thought, or what I thought it would be. So I decided, well, while I'm fixing the microphonics issue with the silicone, like Seduce said, and I figured, well, I'll go ahead and swap the capacitor over to the output lug instead of the input lug, and do the 50s on it, which I've already, <clears throat> I've got the ground loop in the back and everything, so... Already there, I do that with Honey also, the Epiphone, and made a world of difference. Sweetened it up quite. I mean, it's still, it's still got some guts to it. I mean, it's... keep it about seven and a half or eight <laughs> Seduced, getting a little closer. It's going to take some fine tuning and playing with it and figuring it out. 
But that pedal, though, um, that's the big thing I want to debut is that pedal. Because that dude is just bad. I mean, it just adds so much dynamics to the whole thing. It's just... <laughs> to have Satan's bullhorn cranked up to get it to do that. I can do that at a lower, more manageable volume. <laughs> XR pedal, that classic overdrive, 49 bucks on eBay. That is bad. I got rid of my hiss too with using the boss noise suppressor. Imagine that, I'm not gonna have to recap it or anything. It just since I'm gonna build a pedal board to put my my pedals on, I'll just go ahead and slap that in there and run it. That way she's all nice and quiet and don't have to worry about it. But well we'll go ahead and switch her over. I'll give you one last listen to just the 59 and the mace. Kick that off. That way, you can A, B him. Phone, and I've done some work on her too. I level, I took, I didn't like that the frets were as, it had some almost near jumbo. They're the large frets. I can't put it on the strap button, duh. Um, so I took and I lowered them, filed them down, lowered them, polished them up and everything. And I've been, I took and sanded a lot of the poly off of this, off the back. And the sides, the back of the neck and the headstock and everything, both sides, front and back. And because it just it looked like it had been dipped in liquid crystal or something and it just looked almost fake. And I really didn't like that. I didn't want a satin look to it, but I didn't want as majorly glossy a look either. But, well, here's the old... pickup and then this is a Seymour Duncan 59 neck and it just Bridge, 
I did take and I pulled the Alnico 5 magnet out and I put an unoriented rough cast Alnico 5. Gives it a little bit more of that vintage 59 tone. Now this one can do some Gary Rossing and pretty well, I mean. <laughs> I think it's a, it does Rossington a little better than what the Pearly Gates does. The Pearly Gates is it's just the way it's EQ'd. I mean, I love them, but for like if I was just doing nothing but Skinner all the time, if I was in the Skinner Tribute Band, it wouldn't be, you know, the same. But. <laughs> got a killer tone. And I took the neck pickup, turned it around backwards, do kind of a Gary Moore little tribute, because I love Gary. He's got some... <laughs> tapered neck. I've been playing the 59 so much with that baseball bat neck and then I get back on this slim taper and it's like my hands don't know where to go. But I mean, the 59, it's just back to tone all the way off and with the epi. <laughs> scooped sound to it. of the Epiphone and the 59. Now, the Epiphone's taken a lot of work to get it. This has really brightened up quite a bit from what it was, just cutting that poly down on it and getting it to where it's, you know, wasn't like it was just coated in glass, but, well, there you go. 